Otter Lake is out. Reviews for it are out. And the first thing I want to cover in today's discussion, just to set the table, is a type of comment I've been seeing in my YouTube comment section asking me if I am disappointed by Otter Lake's performance. Well, the, the short answer is absolutely not, but I feel the need to elaborate to level set everybody before we continue. So let's be clear about what I expected. Alder Lake is the exact IPC I said two years ago, and its multi-threading performance is right about where I said in February. If anything, slightly better. It should outright beat the 5900X based on the rumors we're hearing about comparisons to Zen 3 that they're about equal, but worse, efficiency. And that lines up with what I just conveyed in my other leak that Intel believes they can probably outright beat the 5900X. So I guess what I'm saying is this. No, no, I think quite literally, and you can check what I've said over the past six months, Auto Lake is pretty much exactly what I said. If anything, slightly better, but a little worse in some ways. It's never exactly everything, right? You have to wait for day one reviews. And so if you're someone who's disappointed by Auto Lake, I actually think I do know why. I think a lot of people have been watching my Alder Lake leaks for the past two years and seen things like 20% higher IPC over a Willow Cove that is higher IPC than Skylake and like higher clock speeds, you know, more cores, this and that. And they've got, wow, they're going to double performance. If you're disappointed, it's because you only looked at Rocket Lake and maybe you forgot just how far behind Intel has been from AMD for, in my opinion, the past few years, right? That single threading performance crown AMD took with Zen 3 snuck up on a lot of people. Before Zen 3 was even out, AMD was demolishing Intel in per-core efficiency and crushing them in multi-threading. So once they take the single threading, I mean, Intel really doesn't just have a 20% gap to take to catch up overall. They had to more than double performance. They didn't even really beat the 5800X. And so if you're at all disappointed by Alder Lake, it's only because you saw double Rocket Lake and forgot that Rocket Lake is arguably less than half as good as Top Zen 3. In other words, Intel still has a lot of ground to make up. And yet Alder Lake is exciting. It's big. This is honestly, in my opinion, the biggest launch for Intel for an entire decade. And in general, I feel like Alder Lake feels like a Zen 1 moment from Intel to me, but just flipped, right, from multi-threading wins, which is what Zen 1 did, to more single-threaded wins, which is what Alder Lake's doing. Although I would say that the 12900K certainly was multi-threading often enough to make it almost arguably better than what the Zen 1 moment was. Or so you could almost argue Alder Lake is like if AMD somehow skips straight to Zen Plus in 2017 and they launched an actual 2800X that was overclocked by a lot to compete with the 9900K directly in single threading, which is honestly kind of what Intel's done because, yeah, it they definitely push power consumption, which is something AMD has never really done, at least not yet. So... Yeah, I get why Intel did this, though. They really did need a win after years of looking like they're falling apart. Which, let's be clear here once we start getting into the benchmarks. The first one to talk about is, of course, gaming. Intel wins here. It's funny, even up until last night, I had some contacts in the industry talking to me about how they're unsure if Alder Lake will actually be better overall at gaming. And I have to say, this looks like convincing enough of a win to me. Uh, yes, there are some games where it's a little murky and honestly i think it's fair to point out that on average most gamers are not going to feel anything from the differences in the gaming performance of these mega cpus frankly we need software or more specifically i'm guessing game engines to catch up with just how far we've come in five years i mean again remember people five years ago quad cores were the standard for gaming and now intel's launching 16 cores that consist of multiple core architectures amd's got 16 cores on the market for over a year and i think we're probably going to see more than 16 cores or we certainly will see more than 16 cores actually from raptor like and possibly even some Zen 4 flavors next year. Just five years going from 4 to 24 or 32 cores. It's a big deal. But anyways, well, Zen 3 sometimes ties or wins in gaming. It's very rare, and I actually think you can chop that up to early teething issues with a big new architecture that Alder Lake is. And Alder Lake is that big new architecture that 
usually has some teething issues. People will be good to remember that Zen 1 had a lot of issues at launch. And so, honestly, none of these things I see, like sometimes, weirdly, Windows 10 version uh, performing better than a Windows 11 version or Zen 3 winning in a game in an odd way. I actually am not going to read into almost any of that at all. These are early teething issues, and they don't seem remotely as bad as what Zen 1 is at launch. But then again, AMD Intel is a bigger company, so it's to be expected. Alder Lake is Intel's return to form, just like Zen 1 was AMD's return to form. There are nuances and differences from what that return to form looks like between the two companies, but I think they're directly comparable. And frankly, a lot more is actually coming from Intel and AMD soon. And I want to talk about both of these, how they'll compete, and if AMD is likely to lower prices soon. But first, an ad from a sponsor. There you go. Good dog. However, Reese, I'm keeping this one. I'm proud to say that Moore's Law's Dead is sponsored by Ewin Gaming Chairs. Ewin makes dozens of customizable chairs for you. These chairs aren't just built for short-term comfort. They are built for long-term support, whether working or gaming. I didn't rush to make this ad. I actually gave it a bit of time to evaluate, and I can honestly say it's very comfortable, and assembly isn't that bad. Support Moore's Law is Dead and support your back by clicking the link in the description. And don't forget to use the code BROKENSILICON to save 20% on your order. I can fully recommend these chairs, and at least Reesey now has a nice one to sit on in future ads, but not as nice as mine. Buy Ewin Racing Gaming Chairs today. So as exciting as the i9, i7, and i5 desktop KSQ launch is today from Alder Lake, it really is just the start and Steve at Hardware Unboxed aptly pointed that out and of course I thank him for the benchmarking work he does I use his data a lot along with Steve from Gamers Nexus but the point is one thing that I found again not surprising that Steve demonstrated is that DDR4 isn't that much worse than DDR5 most of the time. Yes, you will find scenarios where there is a decent difference, but these are the flagship gaming SKUs. Coming out in quarter one, as I leaked half a year ago, is the non-K SKUs. These are the 6 plus 0 and below, so just six big cores or less, no little core models. And those should perform, again, as I said in another recent video from an OEM contact, just fine with DDR4. So while Alder Lake is seemingly on an expensive platform now, you know, the SKU to SKU cost is less than Zen 3, and the DDR4 isn't that required for those. I I'm actually getting pretty excited about the lower end of Alder Lake coming out in quarter one, because it's very easy to see that there will be probably some sub $150 H motherboards like before and that these will run with almost no performance losses using ddr4 just fine when all you have is six or less big cores right and so i am excited soon to see what happens when you can get say a 100 motherboard with a six core i5 that blows away the 5600x and that i5 is probably 200 dollars don't forget that as much as alder lake is coming off as an enthusiast platform now and it is with things like PCIe 5.0 and DDR5 options, that Alder Lake has a whole other part of its product stack that hasn't launched yet and that I think is going to blow away AMD's low end early next year. Well, except AMD's probably going to have a new generation early next year aren't they? People would be good to remember that early next year, it's not just the low end of Alder Lake launching, but also probably a Ryzen 6000 series made up of overclocked XT models and ones laden with V-cache that bring a 10 to 15% performance boost. Well, what I will say then is a lot of people are probably wondering, should I get Alder Lake now or should I wait for Zen 3D? And the overall long form discussion on who should be getting Alder Lake, who should be waiting for Zen 3 and who should be waiting for Raptor Lake or Zen 4, it's going to be in a die shrink coming out within 24 hours for patrons. So if you support us there, you can listen to that. And we will talk about all the nuances of Alder Lake reviews um, in the next Broken Silicon as well. But today what I will focus on in this part of the video is if you're an AMD owner right now, I'm just kind of doubting that you're tempted by Alder Lake that much. You've got your platform. It already games at 120 hertz. 
And honestly, all of the swapping, feeling like you need to get Windows 11, I, I don't think recent AMD buyers, Zen 2 or later, are going to care that much. And I would even go as far as to tell people with Rocket Lake, if you have that for some reason, or certainly Comet Lake, maybe even later Coffee Lake, that it's probably not worth getting unless you need to build right now. But that if you do need to build an enthusiast system right now, like if you have you know, a 1700X that couldn't get an update to support Zen 3 or later, or if you have a 7700K, you know, yeah, Alder Lake is a good decision for you. And I do believe a lot of people will be choosing Alder Lake over Zen 3 this holiday season. And I will recommend that a lot of people choose Alder Lake over Zen 3 this holiday season, which means should AMD lower the price of Zen 3? Most reviewers and pundits I see if they were watching this video would immediately scream back at me, yes, they have to lower the price. But I actually think the answer to if AMD should lower the price is a more nuanced answer than, as usual, most people are probably realizing. Frankly, I think most discussions on pricing of products this year have lacked a lot of nuance that I've been trying to bring to the table, even if I get a lot of flack for it. And... Well, all I can say is I think the flack is worth it to have a more interesting and adult discussion on this channel about pricing because we need to get into it. There are some real world factors as to why these companies are pricing things the way they are, even if it confuses some people, and why AMD might not be as trigger happy to lower prices as a lot of people might expect them to be. The real world situation for AMD is this. If I was AMD and Alder Lake just came out and I'm looking around, what I would see is a few things that I would take into consideration on considering price drops, right? Number one, demand remains insane, and there are docks full of boats that a lot of newer motherboards and other products are going to have continued shipping issues all holiday season. If I was AMD, I would guess that most people looking to build now, if they actually had to, forced to build now, would settle for Zen 3 if they actually needed to upgrade and Alder Lake SKUs were out of stock. And some of them already are, which I find interesting. I would actually get the i7 if it was me, and I'd tell gamers to get the i5. But nonetheless, if you are a creator and the i9 is out of stock, which I'm seeing it pretty much is already, well, frankly, the 5950X is only $100 more while being widely available so available that if I wanted one tomorrow at, to be delivered to this house in Nashville, I press a button, it gets here in under 24 hours. It is widely available, shipping quickly, and the motherboards are all out there on shelves. This is a logistical factor. X570 is an established platform. Zen is a year old in lining the shelves, and there are shipping issues in demand. I don't think AMD, which, you know, going into uh, the second factor, has any worry about Things selling out this holiday season. I just think I just think they're going to, and their goal is to make as much money as possible, especially when they consider that Alder Lake isn't completely better. It, it, it isn't, though. It uses much more energy. The platform and cooling costs more than Zen 3. And if you look at the tech power-up benchmarks here, most users aren't going to see a difference even in 1080p gaming. Zen 3 is generally more cost-effective in the upper end compared to Alder Lake. We're honestly offering similar performance 90% of the time. Intel is back, and I do recommend Alder Lake, just to be clear, for most people building new right now. I want to be clear about that. I recommend Alder Lake, but Zen 3 is pretty damn good for being just a year old, isn't it? And it has its own advantages. And, you know, this next thing here, another factor, is Gamers Nexus points out, Alder Lake seems to actually run pretty okay in Windows 10, but... Yeah, I think most gamers at least have the perception that they need Windows 11 to use Alder Lake to the max. And technically that is true, I think. And I'll speak for myself. I don't want to upgrade operating systems right now. And most gamers I ask are not interested in upgrading to Windows 11, or at least they don't feel like they have this excitement to, to rush into it. And so with there at least being a perception, although I might be up for debate if it's actually required, a perception that you need Windows 11 for Alder Lake, I think that's another factor AMD is going to realize that might make a lot of people just get Zen 3 again anyways this holiday season. And so I mentioned logistical issues, which AMD has an advantage in, having it be an established product, X570 and Zen 3 versus Alder Lake. And then also ra ridiculous demand as being another factor. It's probably going to sell anyways. And then factor number three, 
Alder Lake isn't entirely better than Zen 3. It does have more expensive costs in some departments while not always winning. And there's a perception you need Windows 11, which people don't want. After those three main factors, the final factor, which I actually think is the most important one, if I was AMD, I would be considering the pricing precedence I would set if I adjusted prices too much right now, right? In reality, Zen 3 remains highly competitive with Alder Lake, even if I myself and most will recommend Alder Lake over Zen 3. And Ryzen 6000 is probably launching quarter one and will be 10 to 15% better than this. You know, even if we look at worst case scenarios for when, for AMD in recent benchmarks, uh, I think another 10 to 15% is going to be enough to make Zen 3D firmly win multi-threading performance against Alder Lake, probably win single threading half of the time, and even in worst case scenarios, be close enough. Yeah, I think that if you're AMD, you have to think, do we want to set the precedence that these SKUs are now at lower prices before we launch something that will compete fine in one quarter? I don't know that I would if I was AMD. You know, this is something I've struggled to communicate to people, but I I'm going to do it again. There is a reason Intel kept their SKU prices at the same level for the past five years, despite AMD really beating them in price performance immensely at most tiers, most generations. People would just say Intel's greedy, so there's no way Alder Lake will cost what it did. But Alder Lake costed exactly what I told you it would be. The reason Intel just kept releasing slightly better i5s and i7s at similar prices to their predecessors is they felt they could weather the Ryzen storm for a while. They felt they could weather the Zen 3 storm. And if they launch an i9 at, let's, let's be honest, the top 11900K rocket, like probably should have been $400. If they did that and then launched a 600 or 650 i9-12900K, people would say a 50% increase. But they knew the Intel diehards would be, buy it. They were weathering the Zen 3 storm, so they priced the i9 between $500 and $600, depending on where you got it. And now, a $600 or more Alder Lake i9 looks reasonable. This is the type of factor that Intel was considering the whole time when people were just calling them greedy. It was a calculated decision, and this is the calculated decision I assume AMD is making right now. Now, Intel was able to weather the Zen 2 and the Zen 3 storm. I think AMD can weather an Alder Lake storm for one bloody quarter at these prices when demand is so high. And frankly, when I talk to people within AMD, I'm not hearing the alarm bells. Like, what I get is that they might lower prices, but there's no, oh yeah, we're going to, coming out right now, that you saw with previous launches like a decade ago when Intel started to destroy them. Intel's AMD is not being destroyed. They need to weather a storm for one quarter. And so I doubt if they do do a price drop, it's by a lot. And um, so if I was AMD and I was considering dropping prices, I actually would, but I wouldn't do it any more than I'm comfortable having the next Ryzen 6000 and 7000 series SKUs be dropped at, right? But AMD can expect Intel to be more competitive over the next two years, so maybe they will. You know, if I was AMD, I would honestly just do this. I'd put the 5600X at 550, uh, 250, sorry, 250. I put the 5800X at 400, and I put the 5900X at 500, and I put the 5950X at 700. And that basically aligns with the pricing of the relative CPU, not gaming, but CPU performance relative to Alder Lake SKUs right now, roughly. And and I would just do that and remind people how much less energy, how much less cooling is required for Zen 3, and that Zen 3 is still winning in plenty of things. That's the modest price drop I would do so that if I launch a, let's say it's called the 6950X, you know, the Zen 3 16 core with higher clocks and Vcash, if that comes out quarter one, I would do that so that I can drop that in at 700 or maybe even just 800 above the $700 non-VCash 5950X. And the funny thing, honestly, is street pricing is seemingly going to take care of this decision for AMD anyways. So really do not be surprised if there aren't any official drops. But on Amazon, you see the CPUs for less money. AMD does not feel that pressured right now, and I think they'll want to maintain pricing tiers for the next generations, just like Intel did. But right, let's recap everything I've talked about in my initial reaction video to Alder Lake. Number one, I think this is Intel's Zen 1 moment. It's their most important launch for a decade, although to be fair, 
probably because half of that decade they were stagnating on quad cores. But nonetheless, it is what it is. The facts are this is the biggest Intel CPU launch in a decade for consumers. It really is. Although, point number two, Zen 3 is still arguably competitive. It's got cheaper platforms. It's not seen as needing DDR5 or which is up for debate according to Hardware Unboxed, and I agree with him, or Windows 11. It's got cost and platform advantages that mean that I don't know that AMD will lower prices by that much if they do, um, especially when you consider that they're on shelves already and ready to be bought in a day, unlike Alder Lake that is probably going to hit more logistical issues being a newer platform. And then point number three... I do legitimately, just to say it again, recommend Z690 and Alder Lake, either an i5 if you're a pure gamer or an i7 if you're a hybrid gamer creator, maybe an i9 if there's a specific reason you need to do really well in Adobe. I actually do recommend Alder Lake over Zen 3 most of the time because even if you're paying more for DDR5 perhaps or paying more for cooling, it has PCIe 5.0. If you choose to, it has DDR5, and it can upgrade to Raptor Lake 24 core next year. You're basically paying a little extra to have a next-gen platform now that is arguably not really worse price performance than Zen 3, and depending on what you're doing is actually better price performance than Zen 3. I actually do recommend Alder Lake more so right now. But that discussion, who should get Alder Lake now, who should wait for Zen 3, who should wait for Zen 4, Raptor Lake, Meteor Lake, and kind of what we expect to happen with the rollout of launches and who should be targeting what exact SKU over the next year, that's going to be a discussion, like I said, in a die shrink coming to patrons tomorrow. So look out for that and consider supporting us on Patreon if you want access to that. We really do need more support on Patreon now to expand the team and try to focus more on making better content, being able to cover more products, do more reviews, um, and not just rely on accepting as many ads as possible. I'd like to focus on a Patreon-first funding approach than ads, but we're going to do what we're going to have to. And so no matter what, then, if you want to support us, remember, you can always support our sponsors like Ewen, Vite Ramen, our CD key offers, and you can... Of course, hopefully, tell your friends, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell button. But uh, yeah, I think I've been rambling at the end long enough here. This is an excited launch. Well, much more to say, so look out for that upcoming content. And thank you for watching.